coldest temperatures in decades were recorded in Europe on Wednesday and Thursday in some Eastern European countries such as Czech Republic, Slovakia, Poland and Ukraine temperatures plunged to minus 30 degrees. The dead toll has risen to over 100 while hundreds of people have sought medical help for frostbite and hypothermia. Most victims are homeless, children and the elderly. The severe weather conditions caused power supply disruptions, traffic chaos and the closure of schools all over the old continent. L'aria molto fredda sull'Europa orientale. Freezing Siberian winds that generally only blow in eastern Russia and central Siberia managed to break through eastern and central Europe, blocking the weather disturbances that move through the Atlantic waters, disturbances that as a result have not reached France and England. An area of low pressure has consequently formed, which includes Italy and the Balkan regions that are now hit by freezing temperatures and bad weather. In Italy, Three people died due to the freezing temperatures recorded in past days. The Italian Bureau of Meteorology has registered average temperatures of 10 degrees below zero across Italy's spine, the Apennine Arc. Weather conditions are forecast to worsen significantly along the entire peninsula in the coming days. Heavy snowfalls have disrupted services all over the country. The Italian railway network recorded critical situations in Piedmont region and Bologna. Schools have remained closed in several cities. Forecasters have predicted more snow and colder temperatures in the days ahead, with a low of minus 20 in the Alps and minus 12 in northern cities such as Turin and Bologna. Snowfalls have also been predicted in Rome. The last significant accumulation of snow in the Italian capital was in February 1985, when some 20 centimeters of snow paralyzed the entire city. The wave of icy weather has caused serious problems to the Italian agricultural sector. Farmland products are freezing in the fields, while the cost of heating stables and barns keeps rising. According to the Italian Farmers Association, milk production has fallen by 20%. An estimation of the overall of economic losses, it is hard to tell. Farmers are experiencing losses running into several million euros per day. The combination of low temperatures, ice and snow, is fatal for our crops. According to meteorologists, temperatures in Italy and in the rest of Europe will remain biting cold for about 10 days. Max Civilli, Press TV. Solid news on the jobs front. The Labor Department says employers added 200,000 jobs in December, a burst of hiring that pushed the unemployment rate down to 8.5 percent. President Barack Obama welcomed the report, which shows private sector job creation over the last six months was the strongest since 2006. But he tempered that enthusiasm, saying more people need to find work. There are a lot of people that are still hurting out there after losing more than 8 million jobs in the recession, uh, obviously, you know, we have a lot more work to do. Still, the report paints a picture of a broadly improving job market. Average hourly pay rose, and the work week lengthened last month. Both are signs that businesses could soon need more workers. But analysts caution that employers are keenly focusing on which positions get filled. Really, the jobs that have come back have been more in mid-management and upper-level positions. The lower-level jobs in manufacturing or light industrial have been slower to come back. There has been some job creation, but those positions still continue to lag. Job seekers at a recent hiring fair in New York agree. Job skills have become very specific. The big jobs, they want all these... Un unbelievable qualifications. You practically have to be a PhD to get the, the best jobs. For all of 2011, the economy added 1.6 million jobs, far better than the 5 million it lost during 2009, the most bruising year of the Great Recession. The steady drop is a positive sign for President Obama, who is bound to face voters with the highest unemployment rate of any sitting president since World War II. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, February 3rd, 2012, and I'm Darko. There you go. 600 million jobs are needed in Europe, or are they 600 million use useless eaters?
you're seeing them being called already, aren't you? Yes, that's right, folks. Unless you can get out there and um, slave away in the manufacturing jobs that don't exist, then hey, um, let's get rid of those elderly and children because they don't, they're not really productive members of society. You like that? So I recommend, I'm not trying to plug this or anything. I'm not getting any money out of this. I'm plugging this because it's a really good video. I think it's one of the best ones I've ever made is um, the battle cry for a planet of victims. Check that out. I think the title is maybe throwing people off, but it's all about the farmers and how they're being manipulated and how they're being negatively effective, affected uh, because of weather modification. I have made the, went in the little common boards and Yahoo and whatnot and on that uh, big freeze in Europe. And, and uh, you know, I think that there is a, a, a bit of an ice age coming. And I do believe climate change uh, is a normal thing. On the other hand, there's massive weather modification uh, being carried out right now. I've said this before. So if you're a new listener, um, just making you aware of it. There is weather modification going on on global scale. It's uh, manipulating uh, the jet streams, so things like this are going to happen. Where, I, you know, people will say, "Oh, well, here in the Midwest, it's you know way warmer than than usual," and that's what global warming. I mean, climate change. I mean, I don't know what we're calling it, but that's what it is. It's about extremes and intensities. It's like, no, you're. And I tried explaining it to these people, and they kept giving me these answers, and they were bickering over what to call it: global warming, climate change. It's called weather modification. And it's destroying people's lives enough to where there's record suicide rates of farmers um, going uh, in China, or mostly in India, but in China. And there's all these droughts. and so. But it's like that guy said, right? It's, uh, and that woman said, it's about uh, upper-level jobs. That's what they're hiring for, and they have all these qualifications you have to meet. That is the new society. This is what the social engineers, the technocracy, the bankers, whatever you want to call them, this is, this is their forum. This is their new world order now. And they're uh, almost complete. So, but what? We have this. Implied unemployment rate rises to 11.5%. Spread to propaganda numbers surges to 30-year high. And it goes on here and it says sick of the propaganda. Then do the following calculation. And it says here that uh, this number, 65%, the participant pr participation rate of 65% of workers to this number uh, below people are not retiring as the popular propaganda goes in fact labor participation in those age 55 and over has been soaring as more and more old people have to work overtime so see remember when I said working longer and harder uh, it's true and you get 159 million so uh, basically it goes in there and it says if you add these people who the Bureau of Labor Statistics is purposely uh, ignoring, that's those who um, basically are looking for work, can't find it, no longer receiving unemployment benefits, yet who most certainly are in dire need of labor and a job, uh, to 12.758 million reported unemployed by them, and you get 17 million in real unemployed workers. So basically, what does it mean? It's saying that using just the um, basically the bureau's denominator and calculating the unemployment rate of 154 million, the real unemployment rate actually rose in January to 11.5 percent. And we have stuff like this: American Airlines plans to cut 13,000 jobs, and then uh, layoffs leap 28 percent in January as retailers and banks slim down. Uh, and then if you go to this uh, NTD Epoch uh, article, it says, attempting to define the true unemployment numbers, says some are misled by numbers simply because they seem to be fact and having indisputable value. Thus, the statistical data can often be used in misleading fashion to wow people with numbers, like you just saw in that video, which is basically propaganda BS. But when you go down here and you look at the actual numbers, it says, if one uses the U6 table to report unemployment numbers, the December 2011 unemployment rate would actually be 15.2% versus 16.6% of December 2010. And it goes in here, it says the U3 provides the official unemployment rate of 8.5%. So that's then we have this record 1.2 million people uh, fall out of labor force in one month. Labor force participation rate tumbles 
to fresh 30-year low. It says here a civilian labor force uh, has tumbled to a fresh 30-year low, 63%, as the Bureau of Labor Statistics is seriously planning on eliminating nearly half of the available labor pool from unemployment calculation. Useless eaters. Then we have this farm state outrages is intensifying over Labor Department's proposal to ban children from doing some chores on the farm. I heard this before, but it's coming back again. Congressmen from farm states continue to slam proposed uh, U.S. Department of Labor farm regulations, which would bar farm children from under uh, under 16 from operating tractors and other machinery uh, and working with livestock. Uh, and you do have a very high unemployment uh, for young people, I know in the UK in that, but uh, it's also up here in the United States. California to run out of cash in one month, controller warns. A lot of news coming out of Zero Hedge, that's why I'm covering it, guys. But it says California will run out of cash by early March if the state does not take swift action to find $3.3 billion through payment delays and borrowing. The announcement is surprising since lawmakers previously believed the state had enough cash to last through the fiscal year that ends in June. So... Um, all those people, like they threw in the, um, uh, what was it, when Schwarzenegger took those people, the homeless people that had their own little uh, community, some were actually working in that, and threw them in the fairgrounds. Well, that's what it's for. Maybe that's what those tanks that were rolling around in California were for, too. There's also a video, I think it's like 4T George, I can't remember his, uh, his name on YouTube, but he was talking, but he made a video specifically about people going missing in California. And it was con his conclusion that he, that he came to, that people weren't just going to get round up in FEMA camps, that, that they were literally going to go one by one getting plucked by the state um, for little like little stuff like, you know, welfare fraud or whatever, you know, uh, not paying this, you know, credit card debt or something. And they were just getting like, they, oh, what happened to so-and-so's family? Oh, they're gone. Then the other one's gone. So I guess that's happening a lot in California. Also, he even showed it on video. Uh, what? What I've talked about before, the pack of teenagers and young 20-year-olds, tw uh, 20-something-year-olds 20 walking in packs and droves just eyeing cars to steal, just going one by one by one. And what did he say? He went and tried to knock on the guy's door and said, hey, you know, to go tell him, they're checking out your stuff. They're scoping out your stuff to steal it. And what happened? The guy wouldn't open the door. And he was talking about that. He went in the whole thing about society and how, why it is the way it is because he's trying to help this guy. And what? He's too scared to open up the freaking door. But just by that guy being out there, he actually deterred these people uh, to get away from his property. CBO, Obama's policies to increase national debt 47% to $21.7 trillion by 2022. Then we have this, um, MF Global missing money, mostly found. And it goes in and it says, but three people uh, briefed on the investigation into MF Global's collapse said uh, MF Global misused client money to repay other customers. Okay, then look at this, business partners and banks who demanded cash at the firm teetered. This is interesting because I just had my bank account closed on me, right? Because I told my bank to go F themselves. And, um, you know, because they keep slapping fees and stuff like that. And you tell them, don't let my transactions go through if there's no money. And they just, no, they go ahead and they keep slapping those those things on there. And um, long story short, what happened? Uh, I wrote a long email about how they're basically insolvent anyways and that they should be paying me for p me putting money in there. You know what I'm saying? And what did I get? Oh, I got a I got a I got a personal email from the from the director, regional director. So, and they closed my account. So, see what happens when uh, when you call them out for being insolvent. I think it was more of me telling them basically to go f themselves because I was just tired of them. <laughs> water industry World Bank pilot new scheme to drive public water into private hands. So this is what's going to happen, like uh, in California, and that when it happens, uh, it's going to basically do what? It's going to uh, privatize all of the water and municipal supplies. Greece offers ancient sites, including Acropolis, for rent. And then we have how to profit from the cold snap. Uh, I and Cowie consult investment experts on best companies to benefit from frozen Britain. So I believe this is propaganda. It says city cynics claim uh, that the money's been piling into companies that will benefit from a cold snap ever since last month's international conference on global warming. Global warming. But others say there's further to go. It says here that gas and electric provider share prices were largely left behind by last year's stock market rally. January 2010. Then July 2011, British gas uh, raises gas... Uh, and electricity prices, an 18% and 16% rise in its gas and electricity prices. 
Skip to January 9, 2012, pressure mounts for cuts in energy bills after a new research shows that the price of gas and electricity on world markets has actually tumbled in recent months. So they're scamming. Remember that article? They have to choose between freezing and starving. Villagers scramble for fuel in Europe's big chill. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.